the difference between mathura sarnath and gandhara school of art now as, as we know gandhara school of art is the present day region of kandhar in the northwest pakistan and the regions close to afghanistan so that is the region of gandhar then we have mathura and sarnath in uttar pradesh now what was the difference in the kind of school of architecture and the structures that were seen all of these three represented buddha in one form or the other but the way in which they represented was very very different the first important difference was in the region of gandhar the gray sandstone was used however in the regions of mathura red sandstone was used and in the region of sarnath chunar sandstone was used now this is based on the material what was the difference in the structure the kandhar school and the mathura school reached their peak during the time of kanishk so during the role of kanishk mathura school of architecture and kandhar school of architecture reached its peak kandhar school of Ar architecture the kandhar school was famous because it was an amalgamation of indian and greek style so uh, due to the greek and the roman influence the statues of buddha were considered more like apollo gods and had roman dressing so uh, garlands centuries were commonly seen mathura style on the other hand usually had uh, mud and body details were not very finely expressed in mathura style sarnath style explained the sitting version of buddha preaching lessons or the part of dharma chakra parivartan which was the sermons basically the preachings that were given the throne was decorated with motifs and that was one of the major characteristics of sarnath style so let's focus on each of these three styles one by one so to begin with we would talk about the mathura style now the mathura style was so unique under the mathura style the usha nisha that is the head gear was vertical and as you could see was arranged in a much more systematic way the drapery the cloth was seen from the left shoulder towards the body and that was again one of the major depictions that were seen in the mathura style in the mathura style one of the hands was seen on the thigh showing masculinity the other hand was seen giving blessings the next important part were the two members the padma pani and the vrajya pani vrajya pani had the vrajya or the thunderbolt and padma pani as the name suggests padma had the lotus so both of them with their thrones were seen in the back of the buddha and buddha was seen as a kind of uh, um, broad shoulder picture with uh, more of uh, uh, kind of uh, fleshy body which was seen so mathura style was very very different very very unique now the sarnath style in contrast to mathura mathura style showed a transparent drapery covering both the shoulders not just one of the shoulders and the halo around the head head showed little ornamentation however as we could see in the mathura style the decoration was very very profuse or very very intense also the mathura style focused on a kind of more uh, deeper personality however on the other hand the kandhar style the gandhar style showed the calmness of buddha so that was again one of the major difference the halo around the head of the buddha was very very large in mathura style of architecture and most of the uh, region surrounding the halo was decorated decorated with geometrical patterns or geometrical motifs so, motifs so as you can see here most of the decoration was geometrical and uh, the flexibility which was seen in the earlier styles was replaced by more rigidity and a kind of a earthy look which was uh, seen in most of the 
images the face of buddha was considered as more round and uh, the cheeks were considered as fluffy uh, so uh, that was again one of the most important difference between the mathura style and the gandhara style in the gandhara style the face was not exactly a kind of round face with fleshy cheeks that were seen so coming on to gandhara style what was so unique about the gandhara style as we said gandhara style was influenced by the greek roman sculptures the hair of buddha were curly and a knotted headgear was usually seen the curls were mainly wavy in nature the ears were elongated the eyes were half closed as you can see here so elongated ears eyes were half closed and heaviness of the figure was seen the drapery was seen uh, across the body it was not just one of the shoulders and buddha was seen in a calm residing position uh, most of the face reveals a three dimensional uh, naturality in the structure and uh, traits from bacterian traits from parthian or achaemenian uh, civilizations or traditions were also part of the gandhara style and it proved to be a good amalgamation of the indian and the greek style a lot of images have been found in the gandhar region as well the region surrounding gandhar as well and most of the narratives of the life of buddha explained in the jataka stories represent buddha or bodhisattva in this form so those were some of the classic features of gandhara style coming on to sarnath style sarnath style the body was much more slender as we said drapery was seen on both the shoulders and uh, the most important thing was buddha was shown in a meditating position and that showed the idea of the dharma chakra parivartan or the preachings of buddha the sarnath where it started as we mentioned the body was slender elongated the face was not exactly round was again a little less round as compared to the mathura style the ears were longer the ear lobes were longer the eyes were half closed but uh, the lower lip here was much more protruding and that uh, made it a little unique the face was relatively rounder as compared to the gandhara style so those was one of the major difference and during the kushan period a lot of sculptures of sarna times were also seen now the ushanisha or the head knot usually showed curly hairs in contrast to the wavy hairs as depicted in the gandhara style uh, most of the central part of the halo was plain without anything that was marked and then outside it was the decoration as we said the drapery that was used to cover was transparent in the times of sarnath style however it was not so in the mathura style uh, also another important thing to note here was uh, the the uh, the structure was much more systematic in fashion with a kind of wheel that was shown at the bottom of the buddha and then we had the people around the uh, the structure that was shown so again a very very important element which was part of the sarnath was the dharma wheel or the chakra as it is called as which was a uh, kind of association to the concept of dharma chakra parivartan so those were some of the important characteristics to repeat again the ear lobes were big eyes were uh, half closed the lower lip was protruding and the face was less rounder as compared to the mathura style but more rounder as compared to the gandhara style so those were the major differences as you can see here and here again the uh, padmanabhi and the vajrapani were seen as part of the uh, the structures or the stupas of buddha in certain cases coming on to the broad differences now gandhara style as we know was a style of buddhist visual art however 
Mathura style deals with also Jainism, Hinduism, which includes both the Vaishnavites and the Shaivites. The Gandhara style, since was influenced by the Greek Roman civilization, had the Hellenistic view. However, uh, the Mathura style was much more modeling Buddha on the basis of Yaksha and uh, the Yaksha images. In the Gandhara style, the calmness of the face was seen. However, in the Mathura style, Buddha was shown to be very, very delighted and was seated in a Padmas Padmasan pose with the right hand in the Abhay Mudra, as we mentioned, and the left hand on the thigh, representing masculinity. In the Gandhara style, as mentioned before, the eyes were relatively longer, the earlobes were uh, uh, relatively uh, uh, well defined with the lobes sh longer. However, in the Mathura style, the lips were much more thicker and the eyes were relatively wide. Gandhara school used grey sandstone, Mathura school used red sandstone and Sarnath school used Chunar sandstone for the construction of the images and also uh, Gandhara school of architecture flourished from the 1st century BC till the 5th century AD. However, uh, this had its origin, the Mathura school had its origin only somewhere around the 1st century AD. During the 2nd century BC, so all this style, the Gandhara school which flourished during the 1st century BC had uh, the various images which were clearly representing Buddha. During the 2nd century BC, uh, the images of Mathura were much, uh, the, the images that were seen in Mathura talked about much more, uh, uh, much more um, uh, clear depictions of Buddha with rounder appearance and a broader appearance, broader shoulders as uh, part of the sculptures. During the 3rd century, the volume uh, became much more uh, larger okay the body became much more broader to be expressed in the images during the fourth century uh, the most important development was the drapery the volume of the drapery that was used changed and uh, the structure became much more uh, confined much more rigid however during the 5th and the 6th century the drapery was slowly integrated into the mass and therefore during the Sarnath school we say the transparent drapery was usually depicted so those were some of the major differences that have been witnessed in contrast in the Gandhar and the Mathura school 